We've got an expert market voice in studio with us this afternoon. Joining us is Rajesh Kothari, the Managing Director of Alpha Accurate Advisors. Rajesh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we've got a variety of things to look forward to in True. terms of where these markets are headed. The first event, of course, will be what Janet Yellen says this evening. True. Do you think it's going to have a big impact, if she takes the word patience out of her commentary, a big impact on emerging market inflows specifically to India? I don't think so. I think it is there is an over-analysis of each and every word sure. of uh, what U.S. Fed is going to talk about. But one thing we need to keep in mind is that while on one hand there can be possibility of tightening, whether it's question of June or September or 25 bips or it may be higher over a period of three, four quarters, the Europe is still surplus. The quantity easing by Europe, quantity easing by Japan, China is also now going to be easy monetary policy. So there are a lot of offsetting factors. Sure. And number two, it cannot be that each good news is a bad news. Actually, it is a good news because the U.S. economy is doing well, correct? So now market is treating each bad news as a good news, and good news is a bad news, but we need to come back and focus on fundamentals. And that's why the U.S. economy is doing reasonably better compared to what people thought two years back. So whether it is a June, whether it is a P capital of patient or P small, I think we are over-emphasizing on uh, and over-doing uh, research on all the You don't words. even expect any sort of volatility in the interim? Volatility may happen. But it is going to be very sharp volatility. And, and just for a couple of days, you would imagine. It's that. possible. It's possible. And it can be either way volatility. Volatility means it can be both way, correct? Yeah. Suppose uh, the stand is a little bit soft, then people will again talk about the same things again. That now it is going to be postponed by another one quarter. And it's more of a speculation in nature. But in India per specific, if you look at the currency movement, hmm. and that basically gives you the kind of a flavor of each country, whether investors likes it or not. And that's why the Indian currency has remained extremely stable compared to many other emerging market economies. Okay. And therefore, I believe that even if, suppose, there is a, a little bit tightening, which, uh, you know, tomorrow, suppose, today and I, this announcement, you think that the currency stability shows that India is going to be overall better positioned compared to many other economies. Okay, so if that's not the big next big trigger for the Indian markets, what mm -hmm. is? Would you expect that it would be fourth quarter earnings, annual earnings? Uh, you know, that will actually change expectations from these markets either to the upside or the downside because the last quarter was very disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, or are you expecting now more policy announcements from the government to be the next big driver? I think the next big driver needs to be the on-road execution. Hmm. It has to be now execution-driven growth. By the, hmm. by the government. By the government, by the corporates, actual things, you know. We do not need now announcement. Hmm. The policy framework has been already, you know, last nine months has been spent on the policy framework. You know, road projects told and all that stuff is clearance one by one. Now we need on-ground execution. Okay. And I think that's so, where so we let, need to focus. So let, let me just ask you, la last uh, year to date, that is April of 2014 till today, you returned about almost 72%. True. Uh, do you expect the next... Uh, six to eight months to be as easy, if I can put that put it no. that way. I, I, I think markets are never easy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Fortunately or unfortunately, can you, can, can, you never easy. can you get these kind of returns? Because a lot of, a lot of these returns are factoring, factoring in, as you said, hope and uh, expectation policy. So, so do you see on ground taking off to to give you, if not the return, because these are completely outlying returns. Right, uh, right. Uh, anyway, close to this. See, last year Sensex delivered 30% return. Mm -hmm. March 15, March. Uh, FI15 from 1st April to 31st March, I mean, near to that. So we are 72% up, up compared to market, which is 30%. Okay. We believe the next two to three years is going to be back to the golden period of growth of FI03 to 08. In FI03 to 08, Sensex went up by five times. Mm. All indices, you look at any bomb stock exchange indices, whether it's a capital goods indices, PSU bank indices, any indices. The minimum it was up was 3.8 times, which was an IT index. Mm. And maximum was capital goods, which is 15 times. 15 times in five years, capital goods indices. So what I'm trying to say is that if we are going to back to that kind of a golden period, in terms of GDP growth, which is 7% plus, IIP growth, which is a reasonably healthy growth, then we can think that Corporate earnings growth can be 18 to 20 percent plus. Do you really think we're headed to growth of those levels again? Uh, wasn't that a very unusual period in the history of the global economy? Uh, you know, I know you're saying liquidity flows, monetary policy easing continues, if not by the Fed, by other banks. Uh, but will they replace the kind of flows that the Fed had pumped into the economy over the last few years? I don't know. I'm not sure whether we'll ever get back to 03, 08 levels. See, the point is in 03 to 08, the corporate earnings growth was 25 percent, mm -hmm. CAGR. And market delivered 35% plus CAGR, correct? So market cap growth exceeded the net profit growth by quite decent margin. 
So right now, let's assume, let's be conservative. Hmm. Let's assume 20 to 20 percent earnings CAGR, which is possible. And let's assume that market cap growth mirrors the earnings growth. So 20 okay. to 25 percent. So 20 to 20 percent is the sensex what we are talking about over the next three to four years, which is definitely pos uh, possible. And on top of it, please keep in mind that while the liquidity from the Fed perspective may not be the same, but the U.S. economy back on growth is going to be the biggest engine for the entire world economy. Hmm. And that the quantitative easing by Japan and Europe is still also. continuing in a very big way. So I think these two economies, they were not QE in 0308. Like, and Japan is big, correct? Japan is a big driver. So the entire liquidity perspective, I'm not too much worried. Hmm. If we have a right fundamentals, the liquidity will always follow the fundamentals, in my view. So we think that, and with new Modi government, and we believe that there is a lot of hope, of course, and we believe that there is going to be on-ground execution, which will improve, maybe after three, four, five months. And as you will see improvement in that, you know, more GST, you know, so many other drivers, then definitely the earnings growth can really? be higher. So you said, oh, through, then what oh, through the 08, you pointed out, cap, the capital good index was, was by far the outperformer. True. What do you see leading, if you, if you assume all of this happened and we have this golden period again, what, what will lead it? I think the capital goods has to come back because the investments will be more. Because this time, uh, uh, in, in fact, if you look at the budget, while there is a lot of uh, criticism of the budget, uh, the good thing is that the government is focusing on investment-led growth and not the consumption-led growth. So consumption on its own can lead to growth, but government perspective is a focus on investment. And if it is a more investment, and you are seeing on the coal policy side what is happening, and that is going to lead to the improvement on the stalled projects. You know? So as more investment, then definitely the capital goods indices they have to need to do better compared to the overall uh, you know, market cap. And, I, and are are you deeply invested in capital goods? Because in your top five pick, picks, I can't seem to see, uh, top five investments, I can't seem yeah, to but see the overall is a major capital is. goods players. Yeah, you, you're right. But as an overall sector, then we are invested, you know, uh, quite heavily on the capital okay. goods. But, uh, okay. I mean, the, uh, the list I've got, you've got auto and auto ancillaries, you've Correct. got uh, private sector banks, you've got select NBFCs, Correct. and consumer durables as your first... Uh, Correct. The, the, that's a top five. Top four. That's, uh, Correct. Yeah. And and then, if you look at from the sectoral perspective, then capital goods will be one, of the, okay. one of the heavy sector, okay. equivalent to, you know, uh, auto and auto ancillaries as a sector. Okay. The big holding really is Hitachi. I mean, that's the only, uh, so that, that your entire consumer durable holding is is Hitachi. When, we, when you spoke to us last, I think uh, the share was about six hundred rupees. It's yeah. almost doubled in six True. months. So True. time to sell. No, we are still holding, uh, uh, you know, for, for our clients in PMS, and we believe that uh, the company is on a right growth path. And it is a secular story because air conditioning is becoming a necessity. So from luxury to necessity, and with a you know market cap of you know less than a billion dollar, is still probably 3,500 crores kind of a market cap. So we believe that there is a still a significant opportunity if one wants to hold for next three, four, five years. The valuation will always look expensive if you look at 12 months forward. But if you look at the secular growth which the industry offers and the competitive positioning which Hitachi brings in, then surely I think it's a worth holding. But explain to me why, Rajesh, uh, if, if your big bets are on uh, capital goods or industrials, if I may call it that, it neither reflects in your top holdings, which as the graphic plate will show, consists of Hitachi, Gabriel and Sundram Fastener, both which are auto and ciliary stocks, uh, Shri Cement and HDFC Bank, sectors which Sensel's already pointed out are auto, private sector banks, select NBFCs, consumer durables. There is no capital it goods or industrials play in either of these. Correct. So if you look at the uh, you know entire capital goods play, so what we do we have the engineering then we have a capital goods then we have a you know construction related so it is the infrastructure so the different different sectors it get classified into okay. so therefore it may not get reflected into that so, it so reflect what do you like in that space yeah. so, so give us names number one is number is of course LNT which we are holding okay. uh, then we have added the few construction stocks in our portfolio in last uh, three to four months uh, uh, like we have added uh, ITD cementation uh, okay. then we have added uh, KNR construction. Uh, uh, we are holding Cummins uh, in, uh, in capital goods. So these are the few names which we are uh, holding in our portfolio, which includes capital goods in front of what investment-led thing, you know. Uh, th that's what I was uh, uh, talking about. That as the, you will see more investment into the country, this sector, whether it is, you know, construction, whether it is a, uh, you know, pure capital goods. And how are you picking companies in these sectors? Are they specifically, like, are you looking for those which have obviously healthier balance sheets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are you looking for those targeted at certain areas of the economy which you think will be the beneficiaries of the first signs of pickup or something like that? First is governance. Okay. 
Second is the, of course, uh, you know, balance sheet side and the market. So basically, if you look at our approach, so hmm. we have a 3M approach, which we always say. Hmm. The first is the market size. The market size of the industry should be reasonably big. Sure. Number two is, you know, market share and margins. Of so it should be profitability. Company. Right. Yeah. So we generally have the, all the companies which we have in our portfolio, they are generally top five in their respective sector. So market share and the margins and profitable market share is very, very important. And the last is margin of safety at what valuation we are buying into. Hmm. So all the so companies... So let's take valuation yeah. that they are buying into. Has, yeah. has governance, of course, governance is very, very important, but has the governance premium really got too expensive? I think we've just had Ramdev Agarwal on the show a little while ago where he spoke hmm. about uh, Bosch, for instance, Michael Bosch. Yeah. He said at 30, 35 times earnings, you can say that's the premium you pay for governance. Today it's trading at 80, 85 times. True. So uh, how much of a premium will you give for governance? Or is, so there, is there no premium you can... No, no, no. So, of course, uh, I think... Uh, uh, it is very clear, you know, 2003, 2008, people probably have 1,000 companies which we are tracking. Now, all of a sudden, that universe for the entire, you know, community has come down significantly. It has reduced drastically. Okay. Because you do, nobody wants to play, you know, with the balance sheet, which you are not, you know, you are not too sure about the quality of such balance sheet. So, you have to pay some premium to governance, how much that depends upon your holding period. So, if you are a three-year, four-year, five-year view, then you can pay a little bit probably more. And if you were just, you know, uh, in less than a year view, then you cannot afford to pay so high premium. So what we are doing is that we are very careful. So we are more bottom up. So top down anyway, we are positive. Sure. And then while stock, picking up the stocks, we buy the companies which are reasonably valued and not, uh, you know, uh, very high, extremely expensive valuation. Then we avoid it. In financials, which again is another sector that everybody ex expects will lead the economic recovery whenever we see it. Uh, You've, your, one of your topics is HDFC Bank, which True. is a fairly common one across portfolios. True. True. Uh, but, you know, what about some other banks in the space? Like, for instance, PSU Banks, are you at all invested in them? Or ICICI Bank, which has been having a bit of a rough ride this year so far. Yeah, of course, we, we do hold ICC Bank. It is not in our top holding. Sure. Uh, in PSU, we have a State Bank of India. But apart from that, we do not have any other major, uh, uh, you know, large banks. Okay. We have few NBFCs. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we hold Sriram Transport Finance because we believe that, you know, as the MHCV recovery happens, CV recovery, mm -hmm. then Sriram Transport is the best play in that. We also have a Repco Home Finance. So, we have a NBFC, more NBFCs, you know, rather than more uh, PSU banks kind of a play. Okay. We also have, of course, HDFC as well. Hmm. But in our top holding, HDFC bank is our top holding. So, okay. as a combined, it will be 20%. Do you see the sector allocation? I mean, sectors that you're positive on or your top invested sectors changing in the next year or so? So, currently, you have auto, private sector banks, select NBFCs, consumer durables. Do you think other sectors will take their place in a year or so in your portfolio? Uh, difficult to answer because in the sense, if suppose these sectors do extremely well, you know, yeah. suppose it goes up like, you know, shoots up and if the valuation doesn't uh, become that yeah, reasonable so and it goes uh, so really expensive. So I'm actually <laughs> asking you for your expectation <laughs> on some of these sectors. <laughs> so we do expect the sectors to do extremely well right. uh, because we think that these sectors can do 30% profit CAGR. Right. Like last time, you know, when we discussed about Gabriel, hmm. we were asking me the, can the earnings can double in two and a half, three years. The answer is yes. Correct? And that thesis still remains. Mm -hmm. And in fact, if you look at the delivery even in the third quarter, for many auto ancillary companies, in second quarter also, there is a consistent growth in auto ancillary companies, despite the few large auto players are not doing that well. Yeah. Because now they have diversified. So, for example, Gabriel is the largest player you know, in the shock absorber with a you know 22% market share in two-wheeler and 50% plus market share in the commercial vehicle. So, as the CV cycle improves, you will not only see two-wheeler benefit, but also the CV cycle will start contributing to the numbers. So I think in that way, therefore... So why aren't we seeing any CV players as you, as amongst your top picks? No. So we prefer to play through Sundaram faster and Gabriel uh, rather than playing through the... Uh, so you don't expect... There is no new sector that you've got. New as in, I, I don't expect the sector to be new, but new to your top list that you've got your eye on saying, look, this looks promising at this point in time. I need to see some more data before I start putting money in. For instance, CV. So uh, I think uh, uh, the one sector, for example, which is we are watching very closely, I've already given a few names where we are invested, is the construction space. Okay. So where we believe that as in the budget also there is a more allocation on the road segment, the government is also focusing on that. Governance? Is governance an issue there? Uh, no. For example, ITD cementation kind okay. of companies, yeah, k &R kind of a companies, the balance okay. sheets are not an issue. They are not CDR kind of a cases. Even if suppose some companies CDR, but mm -hmm. the management may not be issue. The okay. bandwidth is strong. Mm -hmm. The order book is strong. The execution quality is very, very strong. So these companies, one can have a uh, look at it. For example, you know, uh, we are closely monitoring Ashoka Buildcon. So we have recently added Ashoka Buildcon. So what is happening? The traffic growth is increasing. Mm -hmm. so as the traffic growth increase on one hand, and the interest rate comes down on the other hand, you will see the overall value of, uh, you know, the sum of parts value will also increase significantly. So the yeah. BOT value will all of a sudden become increasingly important play rather than just the EPC play. So I think that's the one sector which uh, uh, surely so is... Uh, quickly, we're running about pharma, 
IT and FMCG. Uh, uh, you don't seem to have them in the top holdings. Is it uh, valuation? Is it? No, I mean, we do hold uh, the, these sectors, uh, but we have recently trimmed uh, some exposure because these three sectors have done extremely well, actually, if you see the last three to four yeah. months. Uh, so we have done some profit booking, so therefore they may not reflect in our top holding, but we do hold, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, these sectors as well. What do you like most, if you can pick a few stocks for us from within these sectors, which may not already be too expensive? Correct. <laughs> Uh, so we we are holding uh, what I can tell you is that what we are holding right now in such portfolio. So we are holding Cadilla hmm. uh, in pharma. We are holding Torrent uh, in our pharma uh, uh, exposure in software. All, all large caps. We are not holding any uh, uh, you know mid cap yeah. software or small cap software companies. So they are pretty one large ones like Infosys and HCL Tech and TCS of the world, uh, which are common. You know, uh, so nothing much differentiated from IT and you know pharma perspective. Uh, we play consumer through more through consumer durable rather than through uh, you know FMCG. So through Hitachi, I mean. Uh, the, yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, and I think is a reasonable. Uh, uh, that's why I said the margin of safety is clearly in our favor. Uh, still, it is in our favor. Uh, so we prefer to uh, have companies which are uh, going to grow probably two times, three times because of its size itself. And uh, that's a benefit which we see in that name. Okay, I have one quick final question, and Rajesh, that is that are you working with any Sensex Nifty targets for the year end at all? And B, do you expect, when do you expect earnings to recover, start showing signs of recovery? I think earnings will show some signs of recovery from second quarter itself. Okay. You will see more accelerated growth in the second half. Okay. Uh, in the fourth quarter, in the third quarter, the recent quarter, the earnings have been disappointed because the crude crash was sharp. Hmm. The decline in crude price was very, very sharp. And that led to for many companies the inventory losses, hmm. which are not yet reported properly, hmm. you know. And therefore, it is not an existed number. So I would say that from 1st April, the new contracts will be with the new crude oil prices. Raw material are also at the new prices. So you will see the normalized numbers. Okay. You know, so from second quarter, we will see some pickup. And the second half, surely we should see some uh, accelerated growth because if that doesn't happen, then surely there are some uh, 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 issues in the entire growth story. And uh, our target remains 46,000 March 2017. Uh, th that's the target which we are uh, keeping from last one and a half year. Hmm. And that remains so because, as I said, 03 to 08, same thing we believe uh, will repeat over the next three to four years. So the, the wealth crisis story will continue. All right, Rajesh, thank you very much for joining us this Thanks. afternoon. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, thank you.